All right, welcome to 11.5 on volume. First, let's talk about what is volume. Now, volume is what you get. Let's say you take and you find the area of something like that. Let's find the area. So, areas like how many squares fit inside there. That's what area is. We call that big B for area of a base. And what volume is is you add another dimension to it. So you got some height. So what volume is, is basically it's base times height. You find the area of the base and then multiply it by height. Now, base is units squared. Area is always units squared. Height is just units. So what do you get when you take units squared times units? You get units cubed. Volume is always measured in cubes. It's like, volume is like, how many little cubes would I have to fit inside of here to make the figure? How many little cubes? Cubic units. Alright, so let's continue. So if I ever ask you what volume is, it's how many cubes you can fit inside something. Uh, it'd be like, where a surface area is, uh, how many gallons of paint do I need to paint? the surface volume would be like how much water do I need to fill up the shape the solid alright so back to our formula sheets we have a column for volume here we're gonna fill that out so for a prism you got a base you find the area of the base and multiply it by its height so volume is just base times height, notice it's a big B, which means area of base. Not the length of the base, but the area of the base times the height. Oblique is the same. So if the, prop, if, if the shape is slanted, it's still base times height. Uh, the right cylinder is a prism in itself, so it's still base times height. But we can do better than B, we can do pi r squared. So the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times height. And it's the same if the cylinder is oblique or slanted. You just find the, vol the, the area of the circle times the height. Height is always measured at a right angle, don't forget. Now pyramid is uh, a little different. Obviously a pyramid is less volume then a prism. How much less volume? And if we were in class, I'd do a fun little experiment, but I'll just tell you for now. It ends up that the volume of a pyramid is a third of a prism. It's a third base times height with a big B and a height. And the volume of a non-regular pyramid is the same. It's a third base times height as well. Alright. For a right cone, now a cone is a pyramid, it's a special pyramid with a circular base, so we can use pi r squared. So instead of writing one third b times h, we can say the volume is one third pi r squared times h. So there's the formula for the volume of a cone. A sphere. I'm just gonna take my word on it. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. There's the r cubed. All right, so cubic units. And the area of a hemisphere would just be half of that. So if this is 4 thirds, the volume of a hemisphere is 2 thirds. Like that. All right, so those are all of our formulas. Now let's go to the lesson and do some problems. Alright, what exactly does volume mean? I already answered this not too long ago. Volume is the amount of cubes that fill up a solid. How many cubes fit inside of it? Or think of it as water. How much water would you need to, to have to fill up something? If you increase the surface area, does that increase the volume? Well, that's a tough one. If you think about a balloon blowing up, alright? As the balloon blows up, uh, 
the surface area is increasing and the volume is also increasing. Alright, so your surface area increases, volume increases. But that's not always true. For example, um, in this shape down here, by taking the cone out of this problem, I have increased the surface area because I, I increased the surface area of this cone. So there's more surface area here than there was before I took that cone away. However, it decreased the volume because it took the cone away. So increasing surface area sometimes it increases the volume, sometimes it decreases the volume actually. All right. Uh, find the volume of the following shape. So here we are. Find the volume. Volume is base times height. This is a prism with a triangular base. The uh, base we got to go find. The height is 4. So let's look at this triangle. This triangle is a 4, oh, it's a 3, 4, 5. So therefore the area is 1 half times 3 times 4, 1 half base times height for a uh, triangle. So 3 times 4 is 12, 12 times a half is 6. So therefore the area of that triangle is 6, that's what we put right there. 6 times 4 is 24, and it's always cubed for volume. For B, uh, this is also a prism, and the, one of the big questions I have for you here is, what is the height of this prism? Is this the height? No. Is this the height? No. Is, well, then what's the height? It's this. This is the height. Height is always measured from base to base. This is a trapezoidal prism. Here's the trapezoid trapezoidal prism, and this is the height, which is 10. Alright, so the volume of this is going to be base times height. We have to figure out what the volume of that trapezoid is. Uh, sorry, I mean the area of this trapezoid is. So let me just do that up here. You take the two bases of the trapezoid so these are your bases of your trapezoid, but it's not the base of the prism. That would be 10 and 6, so you do the average of 10 and 6 times the height of the trapezoid. Not the height of the prism, it's the height of the trapezoid. 3.5. So anyway, you get 10 plus 6 divided by 2. Uh, times 3.5. So you get uh, 28 for the area of this trapezoid. So you take 28 times the height of the prism, which is 10, so you get 280 inches cubed. For the cone, pretty straightforward. Volume is one third r squared h, the radius is 10, the height is, ooh, what is the height? It's unknown. Ooh. So that means we have to find that height. Well, if this is 10 and this is 22.4, we can do the Pythagorean theorem real quick and do 22.4 squared minus 10 squared and do the square root of that and you get about 20, let's call it 20 so the height is 20, you just do the Pythagorean theorem to find that height now we can plug it all into our calculator just as it is, since we're already rounded we'll just go ahead and plug that in our calculator so I can do one third times pi times 10 squared times 20. About 
2094 little cubes it takes to fill that cone up. 2094. I'm going to do an approximately 2094 centimeters cubed. Alright, for part D, this one's a little bit uh, less obvious. We have to start with the cube and subtract the volume of the cone. So it's a cube minus a cone. Alright. For the cube, when you're doing a cube, it's really easy to find the volume. You just do 6 times 6 times 6, or you probably remember that is length times width times height. There's a little throwback to middle school length times width times height for a cube. So what is 6 times 6 times 6? It's the evil cube. 6 cubed, 216. So 216 for the cube. 216 little cubes that fit inside of this big cube. Then you have to subtract the cone, so you got to subtract 1 3rd pi r squared h. The radius is 2. And the height is, oh, we got to do the Pythagorean theorem again. Hmm. Oh, no, we don't. The height is 6. I'm assuming that this is the same length as this. All right, so let's plug that into our calculator and see what we end up with. So that is 1 3rd pi times 2 squared times 6. About 25 units. So it's 216 units cubed minus 25 units cubed, which is about 191 altogether. 191 centimeters cubed. You can see that this decreased the volume when we took the cone out. We took it away. We took space away from the original. It was at 216, and when we took the cone away, we went down to 191. Uh, for part E here, this is a composite. So all we're doing is we're taking a hemisphere plus a cylinder. All right. So the hemisphere is 2 thirds pi r cubed. The cylinder is pi r squared times h. All right. So for this one, it's 2 thirds pi times 10 cubed. And for this one, it's pi times 10 squared times the height, which is 16. So for the, you know, I'm just going to do everything in terms of, no, never mind. Let's go ahead and plug this into our calculator. We've got 2 thirds pi times 10 cubed. That's about 200, 2094 for that one. Weird. This was the same. Really? Huh. What do you know? The volume of this cone is the same as the volume of this hemisphere. That's just that's just amazing. So about 2094 for the hemisphere. And for the cylinder, pi times 10 squared times 16, 5,026, 27, if we're rounding. So now add those together to get your final answer. We can be tricky in our calculator here and do this, that plus that, and that gives us a much better answer. About 7,121 uh, units cubed, since we don't have any units. Just adding the top to that. Uh, for F here, 
it says find the volume in terms of x. So it's not like these, we're just going to come up with an equation. So volume is always base times height. Here's the base. It's a triangular prism. The height would then be 7. Now the base is a triangle. So how do you find the area of a triangle? It's 1 half times 2x times x, or 1 half base times height for the triangle, and then the height is 7. So we've got the base right there in terms of x, and we've got the height right there. So now we'll just simplify this. Let the 1 half and the 2 cancel off, and now we're left with x times x, which is x squared times 7, which we will call that 7x squared. So you can find the volume of this by just using this equation. I got a little complicated. Let's go to G. Find the volume in terms of x. Same idea, and this one's a little easier. Length times width times height. The length is 3x, we'll say the height is 5x, and that's x. So the volume of this is 15x cubed. That'll be the volume of that particular shape. Uh, H, this is one of my favorites. Um, they give us a little info, we got to figure out what uh, that is. Let's see here. Oops, I'm not sure how much time I've got left. So the volume of a cone is 27 pi. So there we go. The volume of a cone this is what we're working with. I'm going to go and write that down. The volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. There's the volume of a cone. The volume of a cone is 27 pi. So I can plug in 27 pi on this side of the equation. The height is three times as large as the radius. So if the radius is x, we'll say, what's the height? It's three times as large. 3x. So there's my radius. There's my height. Now I'm just going to solve for x. First thing we can do is cancel that pi off because it's all multiplication. We can just cancel it off. Uh, the other thing we can do is take this 3 and multiply it over there. So we'll get 27 times 3, which is 81, duh. Okay, so that takes the 1 third off, and now I've got x cubed, sorry, x squared times x, and a 3. So that's 3, x times x squared would be x cubed. That's a cube. To get rid of the 3, we divide, 81 divided by 3, 27. Duh. I could have just canceled the one third and the three off, and I would have gotten 27. X cubed. All right. So what cubed gives me 27? Something times something times something. And that would be what's three times three times three? 27. Or another way to do this is to x is three. All right. If you want to get rid of a cube, you have to raise it to the one third power. That cancels that off. And if you do 27 to the one third power, you get three. So what does that mean? It means that the, the radius was three, and the height was nine, uh, whatever units that would be. Last question. Now this is actually what a cone looks like when you take it apart. So let's let's redraw the cone here. Now we're getting into a pretty tough problem. The radius of the cone is four. And this length is sixteen, which I wish I had a nice little model here for you, but if I take that and fold it together, this length here is the slant height, which would be 8. 